What's up folks, Justin Phillip here back again from Dog Times Productions. And today we're going to be talking about the importance of pulling focus as a one-man band. We have to remind ourselves that if you are like someone like me, like a low-budget independent filmmaker, you're essentially doing anywhere from five to eight jobs all by yourself. You know, you're the, you're the cinematographer, you're the camera operator, you're the first AC, you're the gaffer, sometimes you're the producer, sometimes you're the director. So, you know, these jobs start piling up on you and, and you forget that in big-time Hollywood, those are all individual jobs that individual people have. On the feature film, for instance, I, I wasn't just all by myself. I had a three-man crew, myself included, right? But I was working as the cinematographer, I was working as my own camera operator, I was definitely working as my own first AC as far as pulling my own focus. I was working as uh, the gaffer as well, right? And then Tristan was mainly my key grip, but also like a, a second AC and also a BTS guy, right? Um, and then and then Ariel was our audio guy. So if you're new to the channel here, uh, we shot a feature film in under two weeks for under a hundred grand. Now it wasn't my project. I was just hired on as the cinematographer and, and to bring some crew, some very core crew members, right? A three man crew to shoot a feature film uh, in less than two weeks. Uh, you can say that we were hauling ass, right? And if you're interested in any of the behind the scenes on that, going down the, the scene breakdown and the lighting breakdowns and all the fun behind the scenes. All of that is available over on my Patreon and I'll put a link to it down in the description below, patreon.com forward slash Justin Phillips. So you've probably seen me talk a lot on the channel about this little bad boy right here. This is the Tilta Nucleus Nano. Um, this is a pretty cool little follow focus. It is definitely essential if you are rocking a gimbal all the time, right? I used to own the Tilta Gravity G2X and this was definitely a necessity on that. And I've even shown here on the channel where I rock it sometimes on the shoulder rig. However, I didn't want to be playing around with this on the feature film for a few different reasons. And one of them was the fact that I only have two of these. These are the little batteries for the follow focus wheel. The motor has its own way of getting power, and I've shown here on this channel how you can run it to D-tap, and then that allows you to give it a little bit more oomph to, you know, push uh, heavier lenses. However, with this, I'm kind of limited on power and just have the two batteries. So power was an issue, for one, because we're filming out in the, the desert in Southern California, right? Um, another thing is, is that I knew that there was only going to be, like, one day that I would actually be using the gimbal and it wasn't even a full day, right? I, I learned very on early in the pre-production phase that about 70% of this film I was going to be shooting on the ready rig just for easier mobility and the kind of film that it was in the kind of tone and action that was being captured, we were, it was okay to, to kind of live on the ready rig. But the main reason why I chose not to go with this particular follow focus was because of the time it takes to calibrate the motor each time you swap out the lens. This little motor right here, um, you know, it, it has an auto calibrate, which is nice, but it does take, you know, a little bit of time. Not a lot of time, but you know, like, like a minute, uh, sometimes more if it has to do it a couple times, right? And if you think about how many scenes we were shooting in one day, right? So our average day was about uh, anywhere from 13 to 15 hour long days, right? Uh, over on Patreon, we just wrapped up behind the scenes on day five. In day five, we did something like 16 scenes, 16 scenes in one day. So you can imagine how many lens swaps that was. And if you factor in, you know, the one to two minutes that it takes to recalibrate the motor every time you swap a lens, uh, by the end of the day, you've spent probably a half hour total just waiting on this thing to recalibrate. You know, anywhere from 15 minutes to a half hour. But either way, those 15 minutes to a half hour are detrimental on a low budget set. We didn't have time to wait around for this thing to recalibrate. Thus began my journey of searching online for the perfect old school manual follow focus. And I did a lot of research online, reading a lot of blogs, you know, things like the Red User Forums and watching a lot of YouTube review videos, looking at a lot of different options on Amazon Prime, and reading reviews on Amazon as well. And and there were a few f key factors that I was looking for. I was looking for a good uh, quality product, you know, something sturdy, durable, uh, and also something that wouldn't quite break the bank. You know, I was trying to keep it under $200. It was hard to find something with those two qualities that also had hard stops. Hard stops was a big necessity for me for, you know, pulling focus on my own and wanting to nail it every time, right? And so what I found, and I wanted to share it with you guys, was this bad boy right here. This is the Foca DP3000. This is the Mark IV version, 
and I believe now there's even a fifth version. So there's many different versions of the DP3000. With each version comes a different price tag, but also some kind of different feature. This one marked off all the boxes for me. It has hard stops. It's a pretty decent build quality, but also it is really secure. It has two main locking points. There's some plastic on here, but there's also some nice aluminum parts on here as well. It's not all metal, uh, you know, but again, uh, you know, I'm going for a low budget option. This uh, will run you $95 on Amazon, right? So that's a pretty decent deal. Let's talk about the first cool things about this. So it has a really cool quick release system. So it snaps on the rails just like so, and then you can slide it up under your lens. And then the second point of contact is the follow focus gear itself. Uh, so you just butt it up against the lens and then you tighten it down. And now that thing is like a rock on your camera. And that's pretty awesome. Uh, about a year ago, I used to show on this channel a follow focus I had made by Camerar, and it was a single rail system. And that was a super heavy duty follow focus. It was all metal, um, but it, that added a little bit of weight to the rig. Uh, and I used to think that the single rail system was really cool until the more I used it, it kept pushing itself off of the lens. And that was a bit of a problem. Now this being so lightweight, but also two great locking points where you can lock it to the rails. It's locked on both of them. Uh, it doesn't ever come loose at all. And then of course we have our AB mark hard stops, right? If you had an AC, they could just use their dry erase marker and make little marks on this little, uh, white um, little ring here and then uh, a lot of times you would have a couple of these and you can wipe it off and while you got the other one on there. What's nice about this one is it has a little groove on here and uh, not only is it magnetic, it has three magnets at three different locations and just locks in there just like that. It was a beauty working with the hard stops because I'm able to just get the actor's first mark, bring up the little screw, drop it in there, right? and then get to the second mark there, wherever that was at, and tighten it down in the back. And then you would just have these hard stops. So as long as the actor hits their mark every time, I would as well. Um, now I showed some examples at the beginning of this video from the feature film, um, but I've also set up uh, some DVDs on the camera cart here, and we are going to, uh, I'm just going to demonstrate the hard stops here for you as well. So you saw a little bit of real world, and now I'll show you kind of a, a staged kind of thing of it. A lot of times the, um, the little bolts will live in this little section right here. You can see they're just in here. Um, but when you want to rack focus, you know, when you want to get your marks, you just open that little latch and then they come down. You want to start with the furthest away mark first, or anyways, that's how my brain works. So that's what we do first. We're going to get that mark. I'm going to get it on the flight of the Concords there. That looks pretty good right there, I think. Okay, we're going to lock that one down. And then we're going to go, 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 go until I land on Harrison Ford there. And now I'm on him. So this isn't a huge distance for this example, but I just thought it'd be fun to show you. Okay, so we're on Harrison Ford and we have to rack to the Flight of the Concords. And you can see how fast you can get that. Bada boom, bada bing. Bada boom, bada bing. And then if you even wanted to travel slow, you could do that and you could hit little marks in between and you just know that the beginning and end marks are gonna be there. They're not going anywhere. So you can play around in the middle even if you wanted to. Like right there's Mr. Pesci and then boom, right to Harrison Ford. And then you could roll all the way back to Flight of the Concords and then you go, oh, boom, right there. And that is a very, you know, that's a very close little example. The possibilities are endless as far as you want to set the marks. Well, I guess that's gonna do it, folks. I just wanted to share that follow focus with everybody, you know, in case you're in the market for a good old school manual follow focus. It's it didn't steer me wrong on the feature film. Used it every day. Used the hard stops daily throughout the days on multiple occasions. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna throw a link to it down in the description below if any of you uh, wanna check it out. It's the holidays and I wish all of you happy holidays and you know, be safe out there. Don't do anything that I would have done in college. And uh, we'll see you next time. For now, that's a wrap.